Hi, it's Rich, a marvelous ministry. Well, we have countless examples of people who didn't want to walk with Christ. The rich young ruler, the Israelites who were freed from slavery in Egypt. God was providing for them in the wilderness, and they complained bitterly. And God permitted their hearts to be hardened. And what did they do? We'd rather have a God of our own. And they made a golden calf. Peter and many of the disciples, after Jesus was crucified, died and buried, went back to their old way of life. Jesus had to go find them out there fishing where they were catching nothing and then tell them where to cast their nets. And then it was too much for them to bring in. Jesus said, I sent you to be fisher of men. Well, how many of us do the same thing? Now, Peter was a different person after obediently waiting in the upper room and receiving the comforter, the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised. We didn't have the opportunity to walk with Jesus. See, Jesus chose, come and be my disciple. The rich young ruler was like, I've done everything since birth. I've done everything right. I can go with you and Jesus is fine. Take all your wealth and give it to the poor and come. Walk with me and be my disciple. And it was one thing kept him from being a disciple. What one thing keeps you from being a disciple? Did you do Romans 10, 9, and 10? Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. At least maybe on the outside it appeared to be that way. As soon as you gave your life to Christ, did you continue to walk with Him? Or did you go back to your normal life, your old life, instead of walking by faith into the new life you have in Christ? How many others? Jonah carried around his old nature when he finally reluctantly went to Nineveh and delivered part of God's message. How many more people that way? Moses, in frustration with the people of God, the Israelites, instead of just speaking to the rock for water, he beat it. He hit it twice. Kept him out of the promised land. What is it that will keep you out of the promised land? You who are living in your old nature, living in your flesh. You see, flesh cannot receive the truth of God. Why? Because in our flesh is sin, a gift from the serpent in the garden. And the serpent is the king of denial, denial of God's truth and God's word. And so if you don't receive the truth from God, then you're living in your flesh, you're living in sin, and you're following Satan, you're following the serpent. And Jesus came to free us from that and give us new life in Christ, in himself, not made with God's hands and using dirt from the earth, but no, this is a gift of love from God through his son Jesus for a new life in Christ, the second Adam, so that we would be birth of spirit. We're already born of water because we were conceived in pregnancy and delivered through a water birth. One of God's requirements for us to be able to go to heaven and be with him for eternity. Otherwise, fallen angels might have had a change of mind and said, yeah, I believe who Jesus is. I'll say it with my mouth and I won't end up in hell for eternity. But God made sure that they couldn't do that. But he never intended hell to be for anybody that was born of water and had the possibility of being born of spirit. So if you, knowing truth, having more than what the disciples had, see, they only had a truth that was spoken to them. We have it written. We have the whole story written out in the Bible. Genesis to Revelation, we have it all. They didn't have all that. See, they had to write it after their experience with Jesus. So what will you be 
Will you be living by your first nature, a descendant of Adam? Or will you be living by your new creation in Christ, the second Adam, the Adam made in heaven and earth combined, so we could have on earth as it is in heaven, joined with God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and those who are in Christ. I pray if you don't receive truth and only receive partial truth and that's what the serpent got Adam and Eve to do in the garden. See, it only has to be a rejection of part of God's word, part of God's promise, part of God's gift. If you are in Christ, you're walking in His presence. The Holy Spirit will dwell inside of you. It's not you go back to your old nature, your old life. No, you look back at your old life apart from Christ and you're ashamed, you're horrified at the way you live, the way you hurt people. That's my testimony. I look back and go, Lord, why? Why did I waste 40, 50 years of my life being broken? Yes, I was broken as a young, young child. But why did it take so long to be free? Maybe because in 94, I believe I grieved the Holy Spirit, arguing for three and a half hours. And God was saying, I should be going to church tomorrow, and I was living by my old nature. You see, I didn't understand all these things. Now I do. I can't say I understand everything, but so much more of my life that I've experienced... I look behind me with eyes without scales and things being revealed by the Holy Spirit. I see things in my life and I go, oh Lord, why did I waste so much time? Why did I hurt so many people? Because I was blinded. We can say that we are healed by God and I am perfect and right in God's eyes. Everything is great. And you might be no different than Saul. Lord, I pray, anybody that watches my videos, I pray that they will pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. I submit and surrender my life to you. I exercise my free will, and I invite you to examine me 100%, inside out, head to toe, and back again. Lord, anything that is in me that is of my flesh, that is from the serpent, I pray, Lord, that you will cleanse me of it, that you will draw it up from the depths of my heart and remove it and then restore my vessel, my heart to original creation design before contaminated by this earth by sin. And Lord, I pray that you will pour your living water, your spirit into my heart, into my vessel. Lord, I pray that you have your way in my life and in my heart and prepare me for the new life in Christ that I don't know yet, that I haven't experienced. Lord, I pray that you will speak truth to me, that I will be obedient and receptive to your word and to the words of others that have been brought into my life to speak truth. I pray, Lord, that you will sanctify me and that I will not hinder or inhibit you in any way. In Jesus' name, amen.